before I start this video, I want to ask you to support me by subscribing to my channel. And please like this video if you find it helpful. And of course, if you have some questions or suggestions, welcome to the comments. And we jump right in. Hi everyone! Today's video I want to dedicate to the topic of stops and mocks in testing. First, let's figure out what they are and why you need to use them. Very often, the functions of your application have external dependencies. These dependencies make your tests untrue and difficult to maintain. For example, there might be a file system dependency, where the directory structure might be different on a different machine, or a database dependency, where the database may not be on another machine or a web service dependency, in which there may be no internet or there may be a firewall and so on. If the question is, will this component behave the same way on another machine, and your answer were no to it, then it needs to be replaced and you will need to use test double. Test double is a term that describes all kinds of fake dependencies that are unusable in the final product. This dependency looks and behaves like its production counterpart, but is actually a simplified version that reduces complexity and makes testing easier. There are several types of test doubles, but today we will consider only two main ones – stubs and mocks. Stubs help simulate incoming interactions. This refers to the calls made by the system under the test to its dependencies in order to obtain input data. For example, uh, retrieving data from a database is an incoming interaction. It doesn't result in a side effect. The corresponding test double is a stub. Mocks help you simulate and learn outcoming interactions. This refers to calls made by the system under the test to its dependencies to change their state. For example, sending an email is an outgoing interaction. This interaction results in a side effect on the SMTP server. A test double that simulates such an interaction is a mock. Summarizing all of the above, I note that the most important thing in tests is stability. And now let's move on to practical examples of the use of stubs and mocks. In the previous video about testing, I showed an example of an integration test. Uh, we tested a class with a dependency. Let me remind you the logic of this service. So, here are our complex service. Uh, it return message, which consists from two parts. First part is a hello message variable, and actually it is a result of the my hello service. It return hello world message. And we inject it here uh, using construction. And uh, the second part is a new message variable. Um, which we defined here. So, now uh, using stops, we will turn this integration test into a unit test and see how stops work in practice.
so here we created a stop for the my hello service class using create stop method uh, that is provided by the test case class actually when we use a create stop method php unit automatically generates a new php class that implements the desired behavior then we configure the stop uh, note that by default the data type of the stop must be the same as the return type declaration of the original method In other case, you'll get an error. I'll show it. we created an instance of the class my complex service with required parameter stop and uh, here we used assertion method to find out if the expected value matches the current one please note that final private and static methods can be doubled just like enumerations and read-only classes and we are moving on to mocks. In order to show how mocks work in unit testing, I need to add additional logic to the my complex service. Let's imagine that we need to add some logging functionality. To do this, we will create the appropriate service with an empty method implementation. Then we just inject the service through the constructor in the my complex service and call it inside the class method. Further, our task is to check the fact of calling the log method. We will not test the logic of this method now. So, let's create a unit test.
So, here we created a logger object, but we did it not using the new operator, but using the create mock method provided by PHP unit. Further, using additional methods for the logger object, we indicated that we expect uh, one method call with the name log. Actually, PHP unit allows for very flexible customization of mocks. We can indicate the need to call a method a certain number of times. Call a method with certain arguments. Specify exceptions for turn results. Set a check that the method will not be called even once. Then we created uh, the instance of the my hello service class. Uh, here we created an instance of the my complex service class with two required parameters. First, my hello service and second, logger, where the logger is a mock object. And then we run the my complex service method. And for today it's all. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy this video and see you next time.